the 1911 owns the best pistol in the world. Yes. And what about the the CZ? <laughs> So there's no comparison. Oh, well, that's that, that's that's some, some smart German there for yeah. you. In fact, that was actually a conversation that I had with a German fella. Yes, sir. Uh, at a SHOT Show. Last um, year. He was coming to do an interview with us, and his his other German, who was made made bleed. Made bleed. We made, made him bleed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not the first time. Not the first time an American made a German bleed. So uh, he actually uh, wanted to talk about, oh, you know, have a little bit of an argument between what's better. 1911 or CZ and the and why was a German asking whether a Czech uh, yeah, design yeah. <laughs> like what, it was what a the hell do you it was care? A confusing conversation. But anyway, but the German guy I was talking to looked at him deadpan because they're not a, a inherently funny people. No, they are uh, not. But they are unintentionally they funny. Are, they are. Yes. And he goes, <clears throat> uh, "There's no need to waste his time doing the doing this comparison between the CZ and the 1911." The, uh, the 1911 is clearly a superior pistol. Uh, this is a waste of time. Uh, you know, do not bring up these uh, these conversations uh, again. And, and, I, and, and, and dead, <laughs> dead ass, I'm looking at Eli, and Eli's sitting over there, and he's going, like, he, he can't contain it. He's like, he's like, hell yeah, Fritz. Like, yeah, you hell know, yeah. I'll, you know, I'm you all in it. It took two times, but you, took, you learned your lesson, okay? He's, he's got it, yes. And, uh, all right, but with that, we're going to lead into what we're gonna uh, talk about. a great conversation, actually. I'm um, Nick, by the way. This, this is, is Eli. Yeah, Nick and Eli here with Alchemy Custom Weaponry, your uh, go-to place for informal uh, information and uh, just general if you're look, fuller. If you're looking for professional Go somewhere else. Yeah, you're not going to find it here. I just mean, keep on keep on cruising. Right. So what we're going to talk about today is tight fit guns, how to handle them, some things you need to know if, yes. you're, if you get your alchemy and it's particularly tight. Well, we got to talk historically too. Yeah. So, I mean, if you got a custom gun in the 80s and 90s and it wasn't hard to rack. Just difficult. Difficult, meaning like you, you really have to put some umph behind it. Yeah. Um, you, you thought that you got sold a lemon. Right. And because that that tight fit was from you know rebarreling the gun, from welding up the rails, from sometimes putting some weld on the upper lugs on the barrels to really in some cases in yeah. some cases to get this really nice tight lockup. And this lockup is all about it's about accuracy, which which we've talked about in the past. Um, but it's also about the timing of the pistol, the unlocking, making sure that the round. I mean, the round is almost always outside of the barrel before it unlocks and all that. But I'm just saying you know, having that proper timing so that it has a little bit more delay. Yeah. In the rifle world, obviously it's totally different. They call it dwell time. Yeah. In the pistol world of, what's the, the action called? Again? Uh, it's a short action breech lock. Pistol. Short action breech lock is what a 1911 is. In this world, um, that, that timing makes the gun feel amazing. But we have some examples of tight yeah. fit guns on our person right now. And there are some, some tips, nay, uh, you know, methods, instructional that we, instructions that if you get one of our pistols and you're like, oh, I can't rack it. In fact, we've been at shows before where we hand our guns to people that are unsuspecting and maybe have not, you know, dabbled in the semi-custom world before. And it's, it's, it's slightly embarrassing. So let's talk about how to overcome that. Yeah, and this is, I mean, and there's going to be a lot of people in the comments that are going to say, oh, I love my, I love my hard, you know, hard gun. I love it, how hard it is to rack. I love, you know, that. But there are a lot of people who are just getting into 1911s. And, and this they, is a little bit, well, we maybe do a video later on where I talk a little bit about gatekeeping in the 1911 yes, world. It's, don't it's do an interesting it. thing. But uh, there are a lot of people that just aren't used to that. So let's get that started. You know, we have had s several people talk about this. So I'm going to let you talk through the way to, to really properly work this gun through. And this yeah. is going to be within the first 500 rounds. Um, and then I will talk about some things after that. So you go first. So this is the prototype Quantico, uh, which I have been told by Eli, I have to leave it to him in my will. Yes. Um, because this is, this is a very tight fit gun. It's got a lot of lockup. This is a blued pistol. Everything that I'm talking about here on a blued pistol is going to be even more so on a hard chrome or, or a DLC. Bluing does not add any dimension. Our guns are tight. When you add DLC, even though it's only microns, it's still adding yeah. some dimension. It is a little bit stickier, I will say, DLC, so you're gonna feel this more. And hard chrome definitely adds dimension. Until you get some rounds on it's it. It's electroplating. So, so all of these things are 
apply to blued, but even more so to those guns. So when you first get a gun, especially after it's been flying through aeroplanes and, and all that, you first pick it up and you have new gun day and you go to rack it, okay? And you're like, I wanna rack my gun and you do this, this number here, and it's locked, all right? It feels like it's locked shut. We've had people, we've had dealers actually call us and say, I can't, I can't open this pistol to check if it's clear and I can't sell it, I can't sign it out to the customer because if they shoot it, it's gonna blow up. They're afraid that the gun, the gas is gonna have nowhere to go. That, and the gun, that was not one of our That was our not one dealers, of our dealers, that was another dealer. Well, It was yeah. just where the guy's FFL was. Yeah. Well, I, I've had a customer that was afraid that the gun was unsafe because they couldn't do that. I promise you, when you shoot 45 ACP, the gun's gonna unlock and it's gonna cycle. What you've got is the gun, it has been sitting for a minute. It's gone through a few different heat and cold cycles. So that tightness is extra tight. So a couple things to do. Number one, yep. go ahead and cock the hammer first. You're not gonna have to defeat the hammer. Number two, do what I'm doing right here with your left hand if you're righty. Do the opposite. Get your thumb through the trigger guard here. Grab around this thumb, around the grip safety. Grab on top and boom. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll put it next to the mic. There's like a little popping sound that happens. All guns have it, but this gun has it more. That is the gun unlocking. And once you get that going, you can come over the top and you can work it in, get some oil on the upper lugs, get some oil on the rail, and that's how the gun's gonna, gonna cycle and be happy. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the method that I would recommend if you're having trouble with it. Just pop it open like that and you're ready to go. And I think there are some several things we need to talk about when we talk about uh, you know addressing this. Um, so I actually, funny enough, I have another Quantico. This is actually the Quantico Carry. Yes. Uh, this is a very tight gun as well. And, you know, we definitely want to get the hammer out of the way. Your hammer has a strut, is attached to a strut that goes down to this mainspring. So you don't want to have to defeat that while you're also Correct. trying to work the pistol. So let's get that out of the way. But if you do, uh, and I'm going to pop that open a little bit. Yep. Yeah. And if you do get there, and let's say you are racking your pistol and you let it back slowly, there are, there are several people that, do that correct they're, they're you know and i get well, it, it, I get you know, it. people are they they spend a lot of money yep. and they're sense. like i don't want to let it all the way back so they're letting it slow yep. they think it's it's slamming it yep. you know slamming the the barrel into the lugs and the breech face like that but if you look here crispy if you can see that you'll notice that my uh, slide is not all the way into battery now there's a couple things that you are going to notice with this um the first thing is depending on how out of battery it is the gun may not fire the second thing is if it, it could be a little bit out of battery and i've had this this has been one and you try to push up your thumb safety i did the same thing on this one and yep. it, it will not engage and it will not engage and what i've actually had happen is someone forced their th thumb safety up and you know kind of tear up the thumb safety where it's going when you see that it's out of battery we're gonna all do this you, at the same time yeah all you gotta do is just give it a little bit of a boop a tap forward and now right. it's in safe now, now now it's in battery and you can engage the safety now there's a couple things that are really important now if you get a gun that is particularly tight yep uh you will want to shoot it oh yes I, you 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 need to shoot it please and, and as much as i love talking to our customers if you get a gun like this don't call me until you have rounds on it um because that is going to be quint that's going to be essential uh, to to this gun beginning the and I don't like this word but it is appropriate break, break in, in. Uh, right and you will want to get this gun on the range shoot it a little bit and in that same breath I would not carry the gun immediately no which let's be honest you shouldn't carry a gun a brand new gun anyways 500 rounds I, I put 500 rounds on a gun before I carry it regardless yeah. But with especially a very tight gun, you are going to want to put some rounds on it. Full power rounds. Full power. Don't put a, this, you know, weak ass shit. 185, like in 230. The gun. Yeah. 230. I mean, Winchester White Box 230 grain, especially, you know, the fact that sometimes it's hotter than advertised. Yeah. It's, it's going to, that's going to be the, the way you're going to break your gun right. in, quote unquote. But you, I, I had, we had a customer have this happen a, a week ago. I sent him a video on how to unlock the gun, and he goes, well, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to go to the range because he he owns five Cabots. And Cabots are and Cabot, barreled completely Cabots, different. Cabots, we barrel them differently. They're fit differently. I mean, it's two different things. Yeah. You know, it, Can't it, compare it, them. It's, a di it's, it's night and day. Yeah. But he got his first alchemy. He goes, oh, there's something wrong. This is not a pleasant experience. I'm like, look, Max, you you just bought a hot rod, okay? You've been, you've been driving Ferraris and Bentleys, and you're loving that. But now you got a hot rod, and it's a carbureted hot rod yeah, at that. Yeah, 
You gotta so let her warm up. You're gonna have you know, to let her warm up. You're all temperature. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, gotta get your own pressure. You, got, you, got, up. you got, gotta prime yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a choke. Yeah. You know, we got there's a manual <laughs> choke on this bitch. So, yeah. so I said, but don't. We can take that lockup out. Yeah. But I said I don't want to remove the shooting experience that you're gonna have shooting a 45 with that lockup with that feel. Because you're going to have an experience that you've never had. Because he's never had a gun like that before. So gave him the instructions on how to unlock the gun. Go shoot it. He shot 150 rounds. Flawless, by the way. It went into battery every single time, he said. And he goes, you were right. That was the most pleasant 45 shooting experience I've ever had. And that's what yeah. you're going to get with a tight fit gun. And it's just, it's, it's something that's, uh, it's different. Right. And I love it. And again, you know, with that alchemy... Uh, hand fit that we do yeah you know every gun's gonna be a little different you yep. know my my uh personal prime elite carry i didn't have any like it was not what i would consider crazy crazy hard fit yeah guess what still one of my favorite guns i own yep. i carry it every single day yeah so um, so yeah what you're saying is if you get the gun and you don't have to do this does that mean it's not fit right no no there's nope. just varying degrees of how all this stuff is going to go together. Right. And I think what people don't realize is that it's it really comes down to, you know, one man's this is another man's this. Yes. Uh, you know, it's just everyone has a different opinion on how something should be. But understand that we have... We have a spec we build to. Yep. Um, there is variance in that, and we know what you know. We know what we're doing. Yes. <laughs> our, know? Gunsmiths, our gunsmiths. Our gunsmiths know are, what they're doing. Know, they know what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, you know, but this is particularly for the people who are going to yep. get their guns and say, "Hey, man, this is a pretty tight gun," and if you maybe they're not used it. to it. Yeah. Um, that's really what this is about. This is about educating people that are new to the semi-custom world, new to tight, tight fit 1911s. Yep. Um, you know, there's none of this rattling shit you're going to find on a lot of the cheaper guns. So, uh, with that being said... Well, hang on. Let's talk about one other thing. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to do this real quick because it, when we, tight fit, it reminds me of other phone calls. I'm having flashbacks okay. to when I was doing customer service for, for Alchemy, Alchemy, back Alchemy in the day. Custom Webbery yeah. back in the day. It was a Tuesday. Um, I, I got a call from a guy and he said... I cannot get my barrel bushing off. Mm. It is it is jammed on there. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Mm -hmm. The problem is he was doing the barrel bushing first method ah. on taking the gun down. So we'll do a whole nother video yep. on this. But on tight guns, you know, take the slide off, take the slide stop out, take the slide off. Make sure when you go to turn the barrel bushing, the barrel is out of battery like yep. this. Obviously not on the gun. It's still going to be tight because it is a hand fit bushing, but it is going to be much easier to manage. So we'll do a video on that later. Well, but that's yeah, another. we'll do a really quick video on that. Uh, but yeah, and, yeah, and, and that's just some things you need to know. Let's shoot some. some yeah, let's some tight let's fit run, guns. Let's run a couple rounds. Yeah, let's here. do it. All right. <clears throat> I mean, this gun's tight, but I can still press check it without front serrations. Right now, on a front gun that doesn't have a light, devil, but I would cigar check. Yeah, if you didn't have a light, cigar check for sure. So I'm just gonna burn this thing down a little bit. See what we're working with here. Yeah, shoots great. <laughs> All right, here we I go. I mean, we have it. They're great guns. And we're going to switch after this. Okay. So I'm going to go, and then we'll do a little switcheroonie. So I want to I want to shoot the commander, the carry. Of course. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll take that. Here, you take a 10 round mag. Oh yeah, I love it. I mean, I a, a 10 round mag on a government is kind of yeah. like And then how this it is ought hot, to be done. by the way. There you are. I love this gun. I know. Like, I would steal this gun from you uh, if today you, if I could. Go ahead. Um, yeah, love it. Absolutely a joyful shooting experience. Yes. Uh, and, and just, I really like the Quantico in general, <laughs> you know, but this, this gun is just... Uh, a step above, uh, you know, it's just, we do, we just, we make really cool we stuff. We make really cool guns. You know? You know, this is the first time I've shot this gun. Oh yeah, really? I, I've not shot a Quantico carry before. Oh look, we're already starting to give some holster yeah, on top. Yeah, good. It's good. Best. 
Okay. You, you it's know pretty what? rad. I actually liked shooting this a little better than that you one. You want to trade? For keeps? Yeah. No. <laughs> Dang it. No trades for keeps on that. I'll trade you for keeps. I know you would. Commander for five inch. Well, you know, I think it, what it was, it was the red dot. Ah, that's and fair. that so I, I just I shoot so much red dot, then I was shooting that. I was like, oh man, where's my dot? Oh, I don't have a dot. I love I just I really like shooting an iron sight gun. Yeah. Too. So but I'm that's a great shooting gun. This is the, a great the Quantico shooting gun. carry, man. Like what an excellent firearm. I mean, with the red dot, like this is just yeah, that is just a good. I, you know what? I'm. I. I mean, I'll I might do it. could trade you. Trade you for keeps. I'll do it right now. I'm not. Do, I'm not saying nothing on film, because <laughs> then you're gonna hold me to it. But <laughs> I'm. I'm actually considering yeah. it. Yeah. It's well, a, you consider that. No. Hey. So listen. Thank you again. We're. This is a really casual video series. Us out here in the in the land of uh, in the land of Milk John and Brown. <laughs> <laughs> in the land of John Browning in, U in Utah. And, and so uh, we appreciate you coming along for the ride dealing with us. And uh, we're going to move on. We'll see you next time.